Humans, while you slept, X-Men comics changed. Since 2019's House of X by Jonathan Hickman, Pepe Larraz, and Marty Gracia, the status quo of Marvel's mutants shifted from the previous 50-plus years to finally bring all of mutant kind onto one sovereign mutant nation of Krakoa, a miraculous potential utopia where mutant circuits had conquered death itself. For the past five years, X-Men fans have watched this glorious idea play out across hundreds of X-Men comics as ancient mutants were discovered, Mars was terraformed as a mutant planet, and cosmic alliances were formed. But now, finally, at the start of 2024, it all comes to an end. The fall of the House of X is here, and this is concluding Krakoa. Today, I'll answer... What do you need to read to jump into Fall of the House of X? What is Professor X up to? And what comes next? Hey everybody, welcome to The Road to the Fall of the House of X. I'm Dave Busing, founder and editor-in-chief of Comic Book Herald. If you like the Comic Book Herald YouTube channel, please consider liking, subscribing, sharing, and commenting. It all helps me out a great deal. You can also join us at Comic Book Herald Live, talking the day's theories and answering listener questions. Every Thursday I'm able, circa 515 Central Standard Times. Don't worry, live apps will be available for all the X-Men playlists on the channel. Check them out on the channel page. Reading orders for everything we talk about, Krakoa or X-Men, all of Marvel Comics are found on Comic Herald as well, with links in the show notes. Some mild spoilers for Fall of the House of X number one may follow. First things first, what do you need to know to enjoy the conclusion of the Krakoa era, which will spill across Fall of the House of X, Rise of the Powers of Ten, and various tie-in comics? Do you need to read every X-Men comic since 2019? Well, no, but if you wanted to, there's only one reading order that catalogs that journey, and it's of course on Comic Book Herald, link in the show notes. I've also recently made a video suggesting the 10 most essential reads of the Krakoa era that gives you plenty of reading while cutting out the filler. For the fastest possible version, though, here's what you need to understand Fall of the House of X number one. Please note that all this assumes you've read House of X and Powers of Ten, both of which are beyond essential and frankly some of the best Marvel comics of all time. If you haven't read that maxi series yet, go and do so. You'll enjoy it. What you need to know about Orcus. Now, this originates in House of X, but the number one thing to know here for the Fall of X is the anti-mutant human organization opposing Krakoa is called Orcus. They view themselves as the saviors of humanity on Earth before mutants overrun them and will ally with anything, cyborg, artificial intelligence, a variant of Mr. Sinister with a club on his forehead, science apes, MODOK, so long as it isn't a mutant. The key players are Karima Shapender, aka Omega Sentinel, Nimrod, Dr. Stasis, aka Club Sinister, Moira X, aka the artist formerly known as Dr. Moira McTaggart, Dr. Phalong, the guy who has recently taken over Stark Industries, Modoc for some reason, and a Dr. Aaliyah Gregor, who is responsible for creating the Nimrod Sentinel mutants most feared. In addition to House of X, the run of X-Men written by Jerry Duggan, which began after Jonathan Hickman's departure from the franchise in 2021, has been the primary book exploring developments within the Orcus organization. For all intents and purposes, Orcus are the main enemies of mutant kind right now, although as we'll see shortly, not all is necessarily as it seems. You also need to know about AI, Omega Sentinel secret plans, and what happened in Inferno. Not, not the 18, 1989 Inferno, the 2021 version. Inferno Redux was the final X-Men comic written by Krakoa architect Jonathan Hickman before he vacated the building mid-construction, and that book set up two unexpected twists. The first was setting the stage for Moira X, the most interesting character of this era, to be turned into a basic evil robot. But my therapist says I shouldn't go into detail on that matter lest I work myself into yet another frenzy. Most relevant here, though, Hickman revealed that Omega Sentinel was far from an unwitting lackey of Orcus, and that instead was a Sentinel who had traveled back in time to stop Krakoa, because in the future she's from, the mutants always win. Obviously, we don't yet know how, but this is going to matter, as it gives the narrative two individuals with extensive knowledge of the ways these lives and events have played out before. Moira with her mutant ability to relive lifelines, and Omega Sentinel as her time traveler. If that immediately makes you wonder, what about other time travelers like Cable and Bishop, don't worry, that never really comes up in a meaningful way. The important takeaway here, Omega Sentinel knows things and has big plans, and although it may seem like Orcus is using her and Nimrod as their lackeys, in reality it's probably the other way around. The humans are the short-term threat, it's the AI, the machine. 
that are playing the long game. Everything is sinister. Mr. Sinister has been neatly centered throughout the Krakoa era, and one of the coolest post-Hickman developments has been the revelation spread across Duggan's X-Men and Kieran Gillen and Lucas Wernick's Immortal X-Men that there are multiple core Sinisters. The original Nathaniel Essex cloned four core versions of himself, each designated to a suit of cards, hence the familiar red diamond, a black club, stasis, a spade, orbis stellaris, and a red heart, Mother Righteous. Don't worry, a bunch of this will surely come up in the Kieran Gillen written Rise of the Powers of Ten, but just know when you see Club Sinister working with Orcus, that's merely one of the players. For the record, the core red diamond Sinister we've known is currently residing in both a pit inside Krakoa and subconsciously in Professor X's Psychscape. Comics, they are good. You also need to know about this year's Hellfire Gala and the Fall of X. Since 2020, Emma Frost and mutants have hosted annual Hellfire Galas, big soirees showcasing mutant might, international relations, and celebrating their empowerment. In addition to announcing the coming year's X-Men team lineup via psychic voting, the mutants would often do something special, like terraform Mars at the first gala. Well, at the most recent published in summer 2023, everything went to hell as Orcus attacked, killing humans and international dignitaries alike, seemingly assassinating Omega-level mutants Jean Grey and Iceman, and forcing Professor X to mentally command mutants the world over to walk through Krakoan gateways to what he thought was planet Araco, which is what the mutants renamed Mars, but what appeared to be their deaths. But what is actually the White Hot Room? Twist upon twist upon twist. Again, don't worry. This will all be on the rise of the powers of X-Final, not the fall of the House of X-Final. Now, Orcus didn't just attack mutant kind physically, as they've also carefully orchestrated information to tell humankind life-altering drugs given by Krakoa were designed with a kill switch. Orcus put the kill switch there, but that is, of course, semantics. Orcus has also captured Cyclops as the face of mutant kind that they can hang these many manufactured crimes on. In simplest terms, Orcus cultivates an environment of fear and hostility towards a marginalized group and demands that humanity angrily align with either us or them. Much like X-Men comics mutant metaphor throughout history, it in no way parallels our own reality of constant agreement and kindness towards our neighbors. The small group of surviving mutants have been rebelling and resisting Orcus, quite literal hunting for mutants ever since, using Stark Industries tech to design Sentinels and deporting mutants to planet Araco, which has been in the midst of a civil war. Of late, it has been a very bad time to be mutant on Earth. Okay, quick pause. Please note, the next two beats are in reference to events of Fall of the House of X. Number one, if you haven't read the issue and don't want to know anything, I recommend you jump ship now. Otherwise, my best theory is approaching. Rasputin the Fourth Returns. So if you've read Powers of Ten, and I'm truly astonished if you've made it this far without having done so, you'll know one of the coolest characters from Moira's Ninth Life is Rasputin, a mutant chimera made up of clone DNA from Colossus, Quentin Quire, Umis the Untouchable, Kate Pride, and Laura Kinney, aka Wolverine. This character joins present-day Krakoa era through the sins of Sinister, the 2023 X-Men event, in which Mr. Sinister succeeded in taking over the world, but failed in his bid to become the ultimate Dominion, aka the Godmaster of AIs, and something we'll talk about a lot more with Rise of the Powers 10. This Rasputin was loyal to Sinister until he revealed his true design, as a Sinister is wont to do, and is working with the resisting mutants in the present day. What was not known, though, was how thoroughly Rasputin may be working with mutant kind. Theory time! In Fall of the House of X number one, Professor X calls on Rasputin to enact his master plan, which immediately throws a wrench into the plan the rest of that mutant resistance has actively put into motion. Classic Charlie Ballgame. After the Fall of X, Professor X is exiled on Krakoa, really of his own accord, thinking he has sent a majority of mutant kind to their deaths, and that his dream of Krakoa has turned into a nightmare. As mentioned previously, he also has a Mr. Sinister link dormant in his subconscious as his only form of companionship. So calling out no more repeatedly and calling upon Rasputin, what is Charlie up to? My guess, Professor X wants Rasputin to help him capture Moira X, restore her mutant gene, and reset the timeline. As far as Charles knows, the dream has utterly failed. I bet he's ready to call it quits and start again with the piece that got them here in the first place. Moira. Oh, by the way, Lil' Brew has a brood army waiting. 
Early in Jonathan Hickman's run on X-Men, the Brood attacked Krakoa in a battle that ultimately ended when Brood, the intelligent Brood mutant and friend to mutant kind since Jason Aaron's Wolverine in the X-Men circa 2011, ate the Brood King egg and became king of the entire Brood hive across the galaxy. This came up again during Duggan's run in a sequence in which Cyclops was oddly fixated on genocide of the Brood, but I'd say it's best we ignore that. The important bit here is Krakoa and the X-Men have an alliance with a massive force of cosmic devastation in the Brood. They also have other cosmic alliances, for example with the Shi'ar. It's time to start calling in some of these galactic favors, and that's what we see Polaris do in Fall of the House of X number one, going and getting Brew and the Brood. What comes next? Well, this is all Fall of the House of X, the interlocking series that I think is going to be the most interesting and I'm definitely the most excited about is Rise of the Powers of Ten. Again, that's going to be written by Kieran Gillen with the return of R.B. Silva, the artist on the original Powers of Ten series. That one is definitely going to deal with the future and dominions and, and sinisters and all of the machinations of the long-term game and future X-Men stories that I find very exciting. It'll be fascinating to see how that interlocks and interweaves with what is going on in the present day incarnation. So if you're keeping score at home, essentially Fall of the House of X seems like, okay, that's gonna be our present day, how the mutants get out of the grip of Orca's story. Rise of the Powers of 10 promises to be, what about all that long-term planning and all that future stuff with the phalanx and dominions that came in House and Powers, the original series. I think that's gonna come in Rise of the Powers of 10. I'm super here for it. I cannot wait. I hope you've enjoyed this road to the fall of the House of X. Thanks to everybody who supports over the Mysterious Benefactors tier on Patreon. Thanks to everybody who supports, period. You can support Comic Book Herald over at patreon.com slash comic book herald. Mysterious Benefactors, one of the benefits they get is getting their names read on YouTube videos. Thank you, Jesse W., Chris Murtvicka, Roosh, Mike Solomons, Treat91, and Marcus. Again, I'm Dave. You can find all my stuff at Comic Book Herald. Look for the best comics ever in my Marvelous Year podcast. For more from me, my Marvelous Year here in 2024, we're kicking things off with our coverage of 2006. We've made it from 1961 to 2006 in a read-through of the most essential and interesting Marvel comics of all time. Check out the My Marvelous Year podcast for more from that reading club. Otherwise, thanks everybody for listening. And as always, enjoy the comics.